Hi, I'm your guest editor, Michael, Mr. Spock 1, Richmond, here to bring you another video from Professor René Ferrand. Today's video will be the first part in a two-part series on emulating and using CDC's NOS 2 operating system. I recommend that everyone go and watch the Moshik's M189 video featuring Kevin Jordan, who among other things is a CDC emulation enthusiast and has done a video on the general subject with Moshik's. I noted in the introduction that the video is for mainframe lovers, but as I understand it, the CDC computers fall under the heading of a supercomputer, generally having a larger focus on scientific computing by design. In the case of the system the professor is looking at, it was originally designed to be used with a learning platform called Plato, which was later renamed Cybus, but that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Please pay attention to the links I provided as well as all the links the professor mentions. And now, here's the professor. Hello everyone, this is René from Montreal, and I'm back with a series of hopefully small videos about NOS 287, an operating system that used to run on the cyber mainframe of Control Data Corporation. So first things first, let's get the beast have it started and shut down. So to download the system, let's go to this address where we're going to find everything we need. Here it is. So what we need to download is this manual here for sure. Then Cybis release one, which is the turnkey system essentially. DT cyber binaries. These are the desktop uh, cyber emulator binaries for different platforms. But if your platform is not in the one mentioned there, you can always download the sources uh, over here. And then there is this uh, P term, which is a specific terminal emulator to be used with this uh, Cybis uh, learning system. I'm not going to use it, but I suggest that you download it anyway if you want to explore that uh, particular uh, system. Okay, so if you download this, 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 and this, you should end up with a bunch of zip files that you're gonna unzip, of course, and this will produce a, a series of folders containing the system, essentially. Okay, so that would be something like this. Okay, so I have Cibis release one, the binaries, the source, and this uh, terminal emulator. Okay, uh, the source is not that big, and I was able personally to uh, compile it on my Macintosh. You can see that there's a bunch of make files here for Linux, FreeBSD, and so on. So if the, <coughs> the binaries here, you see, contains a version for Windows, versions for the Mac OS, and uh, one for Linux Santo 64. But if uh, this this doesn't work on your platform, most probably you can build the, the emulator from source uh, easily. And uh, over here you have the turnkey, the system itself. There will be this cyber ini over there. That's the configuration file. And I just put a copy of the emulator in that folder. The disks are there. And these two, uh, Dead Start and Persistor, the, I believe they will be created uh, when you first run the system, if it's not already there. Okay. So after you have these four folders, pick one of these uh, binaries or build one and move it into or copy it into that folder, okay? And when this is done, open, of course, a terminal window or a command window to run the emulator. So I'm gonna do this. So here it is. So let's start the emulator. You just type the name and return. And this will, of course, start the emulator in this window. You have some messages regarding the different components of the system here, the disk, the console, the line printer, the card reader over here, the card punch, the tapes, 
and some other stuff, okay? And over here you have the console window uh, with an initial menu and you just have to type a return to this to start uh, the system or to perform what is called the dead start or the, the boot or the IPL of the system, okay? So I just type return, the dead start began and now he's asking to enter a date. And this system is not 2000 compliant, so you have to give a date before that. They suggest that you just type return here, that's possible. The other thing you can do is choose a year. I choose 99 with uh, the current date, so that's uh, 0 0.07, like this. Then he's asking the time, so just type the time. And if it's okay, you're gonna end up with these uh, these two panels or these two uh, displays, if you wish. On the maybe it's not that clear with this uh, because it's very small. So let me increase the size of this. Okay. So on the left you have what is called the system day file. It's just a, a log of all the operations of the on the computer and on the right you have the system status okay and maybe I, we take a look at this before shutting down the system you have a bunch of control points CP stands for control points uh, I'm not sure what they are exactly but uh, I imagine them like slots you have in the in the memory to start the subsystems or something like that you have 24 of them available and a few subsystems are already running you know after the dead start uh, these subsystems are in my opinion for the moment you know similar to subsystems on MVS first of all you have sys over there that's the operating system itself or the base control program maybe the core of the operating system running there. Then you have MAG, which is the subsystem handling the magnetic tapes. Then BIO, which is just batch input-output. That's the batch system. Then you have NAM, which is the network access method. That's probably the equivalent of VTAM or something like that. And then IAF, which is the interactive access facility, the equivalent of TSO on an MVS maybe. Although I think you know, that this IAF is a much more complicated subsystem than TSO, but it plays a similar role, I would say. So that's what we have then when we start the system. At that point, if you are interested by the Cybis system, the learning system, you have to start it, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> but if you want to shut down the system, here's what you have to do. Uh, you have to type commands, so you just type this, uh, select the window and type the command. All the commands at this point must end by a dot, because you are under the control of what they call DSD, the System Display Program, that's the main program operating the console. And all the commands of this uh, program have, have to end by a dot, which is very important, okay? So, <clears throat> for sure, if we want to shut down the system, what we need to do is simply shut down those subsystems one after another. So, the first we're going to stop or shut down is IAF. So, we just do idle, comma, IAF, then the dot, and we press enter, and this should end this subsystem. Okay. When this is done, we're going to shut down NAM with the same command, idle, comma, NAM, dot. Good. And then at this point, we want to perform certain, more, certain commands which are more critical, I would say. And for that, you need to unlock the uh, console. The console is by default locked. 
which means doesn't mean that you can't do anything with it, but it means mainly that some critical commands cannot be entered on the, on the console. So we're going to unlock the console so that we can enter those comments. Uh, if you notice, there is some kind of an auto-completion facility, you know, so you start to write and as soon as he has enough uh, letters to recognize the command, it's going to complete. So I'm going to unlock. There should be this uh, unlock word here at the top telling you that the console is unlocked now. And now we're going to enter the command checkpoint system, which will stop these two uh, subsystems and perform as checkpoint. And when this is done, you're going to type step dot and not stop, but step. And step will put the console in step mode, a specific mode, and it also uh, has some side effects on the talk system. About and I guess the console even though I don't little. understand exactly now, first of all, uh, what it means, I believe. Let me say that I never that, work uh, on a cyber. This reminds me life, a little of the quiet one, command so on the everything MVS. I'm going to so tell you now. Uh, you I do that, and at that manual, point, you're safe one. to uh, okay. perform the shutdown so that in explains the a little emulator bit about window. So the console and how to operate the system. Okay, I'm going to go to the back table of contents Regular here size you see that you have so an after the stem then a chapter you just go the into start, the, which is the equivalent emulator the window IBM and you type shut down IBM computers or IBM this mainframe shut down then you have this the operation the under console DSD window control. and also the one for DSD the is the program itself uh, the system display program the one that's uh, essentially controlling this console and by which uh, with which you are interacting you know so you can basically type uh, commands, system commands, and you can also manipulate those uh, panels here. I'll come back to this. And then they, in this book, they, uh, this manual, they discuss also about the uh, peripheral equipment, like the card reader, card punch. And you have this part two, which is essentially the same stuff, but a little bit more elaborated, you know, the dead start again the DSD, the operation, and the DSD display. In this section, you know, second chapter 3 of uh, part 2, you will get all the commands here. Let's see. The daylight file commands, the permanent file utility commands, and so on. So th these are all the commands that you can type on the console. So there's no point trying to learn all of them at the same time. It's just, uh, just uh, good to know where you can find the information about them. Uh, of course, this manual is available on BitSaver, so you just look for it uh, carefully. The DSD displays is something I'm going to explain or illustrate a little bit now. And then I'm going to talk also about this guy, DIS, and the K display. Okay, So let me go ahead with this. As you can see, we have two... Um, panels on the console, one on the left and one on the right, I believe. But this is this comes from the kind of console that were uh, initially used with the CDC computers or CDC mainframe. These were a dual screen display, so you <coughs> maybe I can we can look at this. I don't have it anymore, but let's go to Wikipedia maybe and just see that. It's a very famous, anyway, CDC uh, 6000, maybe, like this. And then we can see one here, but probably better right there, okay? So we had this console, you know, with the, the keyboard here and these two screens over there. So you had something on the left and something on the left, uh, the right. So uh, when they created the emulator, they essentially reproduced that. So you have the left screen and the right screen. You type commands in this uh, window. As I said, all of them should end with uh, the the dot. That's the DSD program. Maybe one command which is good to know is the kill command. If you want to kill a job, you can do it from the console like this. You type kill comma, and then you type what is called a job sequence name. 
the JSN. So it's typically four letters, you know. So if you know the four letters of the job, you can kill it right there. And this might be useful at the beginning, at least it was for me, because I got stuck with the um, interactive uh, connections uh, frequently because, because the, the the terminal would freeze or I couldn't get out of the, the editor or stuff like that. So if I wanted to kill my interactive session, I could do it from the uh, the console using this kill command. But of course, if we we know how to to work on it at some point we don't need to kill the job that's for sure uh, it's also possible to do all kinds of stuff and in particular to start uh, a program that's going to be run in one of those control points over there so with the x command maybe for execute and actually that's the way you start the cybis uh, uh, <coughs> learning system you just type x cybis dot like this and return and this will start uh, cybis i'm not going to do it but uh, that would be the way to do it and then you have these uh, panels over there <coughs> the one you see is the system day file the log and the system status but there are more panels possible they all have a name and they are they all have a letter uh, connected to them so this one is panel A and that one is panel B. Maybe I just increase the size of this. Uh, so that's A and B, but there is also C, D, E, F, G, in fact all the letters of the alphabet it's except uh, N if I think. So if you want to have something else in that, you just type the letters the two letters followed by a dot and you press enter. So for example, I can uh, do H and Q dot and return. And now I have on the left the panel system files and on the right the panel's uh, Q status. Maybe a little, a little bit smaller. Uh, but there's also P, T like this or A, B, back to this one, okay? If you want to know which, uh, or what panels are available, the list is in Z, so Z, B, like this. And here's the directory of all the panels available. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, up to Y, monitor function, and so on. Okay, so that's just uh, the way to uh, <coughs> obtain different panels. In some cases, with a panel, you can have some commands, like with panel A, you can say A operator, A error log, A account file, and stuff like that. In the equipment status, you have A comma X with different kinds of a status. This is the, the panel for the, the different uh, equipment connected to the system. So AE, for example. They have a, the type here and the state, uh, are they on or not. You have to learn a little bit about these uh, keywords over there to know which are, which is which. You know, this is probably the card reader, the card punch, and the magnetic tapes, the disc, and stuff like that. Uh, they also have what they call a, a equipment status table number, I believe, or something like that. And these number here in the first column appears in many commands too, so... Uh, you might need to display that particular uh, panel to uh, get that information. You know. So that's uh, one thing. Uh, let's go back to AB maybe. Now there is also another program called DIS. That's the Job Display Program. It's a program that's going to display in these panels your information regarding a job or a subsystem. So to call it, you just type DIS comma and then the job sequence name of the of the job or the subsystem let's say i choose bio here dot and return and i will have two new panels again one on the left one on the right with a name and a letter this one is a this one is b it gives information regarding the job, different kinds of information, and again, if you want to know what panels are available, you have ZB like this, 
and this is what you can display on the left screen and this is what you can display on the right or left screen. So it gives information about the job or a specific job. Uh, <coughs> you can toggle between this, this, these displays and the, the one of DSD using the star or shift 8. So if I press shift 8, you see I'm going to switch or swap between these two sets of panels over there. And now if you want to stop this uh, DIS uh, program for some reason, you just drop, followed by the dot, and that's going to disappear, okay? So that's another thing. And finally, you have the, uh, well, finally, finally in the video, we have this uh, request, a uh, K display, and a K display, or the, maybe probably the control display, something like that. It's a display that... Uh, allows you to connect or communicate with a particular subsystem or a job, you know, if that job has a, a K display kind of program it in itself, you know. So uh, to illustrate it, I'm going to start a specific job and then use K display to communicate with it. So let's start a specific job called or program called Mudval. Why this one? Because this is the program that you need to uh, use if you want to create a new user on the system. So if you want a, a personal account you know, on the system to perform a, an interactive session and run jobs and stuff like that, you have to start this program and use it. So let's do it. <coughs> this will run and then you see here in control point three we have a job with the job sequence name triple A J. The, the letters for a job sequence name, there are four of them uh, and the system starts with four A's and then three A's B, three A's triple A C, triple A D and so on and then double A B A, double A B B, double A B C and so on. So that's just the, the way that all the job sequence names are created progressively. You can already see some of them, let's see, 3A, uh, G, 3A, triple A, H, and so on, triple A, and so let's, let's now use the K display on this particular uh, job. So to do that, you just type K, comma, and then the job sequence name, that would be triple A, J, dot, and then enter. And now you can see that I have a K modval display on the left, okay, with some information. Uh, in particular, we learned that uh, we can create a username, UN stand for username, or delete a username, or inquire a username, and so on. So let's let's do that. Let's say, for example, just inquire for one particular username. So K because we are on the K display, dot, then the directive, which is I in this case, comma, and then the username. I'm going to choose T Hunter, which is a, an account already existing on the system, which I'm using for, this, uh, for these uh, videos, and which I suggest you use anyway in the first place, before trying to create one for you. And I believe you don't need to put a dot now, and you're going to get, you know, informations like this. You can see that it's page one of five, so there's a lot of information and there's a lot of parameters connected with a particular user. So when you want to create one, you know, you have to fix all these parameters, you know, U, I, A, L, M, T, R, P, C, M, E, C, and so on, and there are five pages of them. So it's a long process, you know, to create a user because you have to give all the, the resources that the user is allowed to use and all the limits he has regarding the files, regarding the tapes, regarding the jobs, regarding all aspects of the system. So, And I don't know if there is some kind of a default uh, version of it that makes it easier. But So uh, you need to read the manual of this guy. I'm going to show you, show it at the end uh, uh, later on. Uh, there is a manual uh, that you can download from BitSaver that 
explain this. I tried to do it, but I'm not done yet. So that's why I use this T Hunter um, account anyway for the moment. And now, uh, if I type K K that like this, I will have a second uh, panel on the right for this uh, Madval, if it exists, because in some cases, you know, the program may have only one panel on the left. That's where you learn, you know, that you can move upon the panel with these uh, commands like uh, k dot plus. That's gonna bring me to page two and so on. If I want to drop this, I just type k drop. Sorry, that will drop the input for the particular username and then k end to quit this. And of course, at that moment, there's no job because it ended. So I can erase this and then type AB to get back my regular uh, panels from the DSD. Okay, so <coughs> and that's uh, what it is. Let me bring this back to the size, uh, regular size. So remember, this manual is the one where you're going to get uh, uh, everything. I have gathered myself some uh, manuals from the uh, bit saver uh, let me show you here they are so uh, the one for the creation of user would be this one here uh, the administration handbook and you can see that you have this mudval over there genval mudval then profile then all these things so we have to read this more carefully and try to understand a little bit the sense, uh, the meaning of all these parameters to be able, or possibly what we can tell and sure do is look at T Hunter as a user, take note of all the parameters on some paper, something like that, and then create a new one with the same, uh, the same values of the parameters or something like that. So, but we still need to do uh, that thing if we want to create a, a new uh, user. All right. So I think I'm going to stop here as far as console operation is uh, concerned. Let's talk about batch execution, so how to uh, submit a job to the system through the card reader and get the output, a printed output. So for this, we need to look a little bit more at the, the emulator uh, itself and the different commands that are available. So if I go there and I type help, for a list of commands, uh, whoops, not gel, but help. There are just a few of them, actually, much less than with uh, Hercules. And they are quite uh, self-explanatory. So you have load cards to load cards into the card reader. Load tape, unload tape clearly for the tape. And then remove cards to remove the cards from the card punch, I believe. And remove paper to remove the paper from the line printer. Okay, so what would happen with this? Let me show you first with the remove printer. What says the syntax? So if you type help uh, RP, you see that you have to type remove paper or RP, then the channel, then the equipment. Uh, so what was the channel? You see that the line printer is initialized on channel 7, equipment 7. So what you need to do is type uh, RP77 like this. But before I do this, let me show you something else. If I look at this, you know, this is the, the folder where the turnkey is located. So you have this file LP5XX C07E7, so that's channel 07, equipment 7. And you see that there's already some stuff in that file, okay? So that's the output that was uh, printed. So it's part of the output uh, that happens when you perform the dead start. So if I remove the paper, what will happen is that this output will be copied into a new file, and this one will be uh, uh, cleared essentially, so let's do it. Paper remove, and now if I do this, you see that LP5XXC077 is now empty, and what was before in that uh, 
file is now in this new file lp5xx and this thing is just the date with the uh, with the time so i created a small uh, program just to convert this uh, output file to pdf so you can do whatever you want uh, with that we can look at it uh, directly but i'm going to convert it anyway so that was qrec i believe so here it is that's some information regarding this uh, the first dead start okay so uh, if we want to run a job in bash we have to load the cards into the card reader wait for the job to finish then uh, remove the paper from the line printer and convert it into a PDF if we wish okay to get the result so let me show you a job uh, maybe more jobs I have a small folder with some jobs here's a hello world uh, Fortran job it's very simple there is not that much JCL I believe in uh, in this uh, system uh, first thing you have this job card which is very simple in this case because you just specify a name followed by the dot and again the dot is important here the name is no more than seven character if I'm right that's gonna be what it called the user job name the UJM and then the user card to specify a user on which under which uh, the job will be uh, run I'm gonna use T Hunter, the user uh, Tom Hunter, and the password is pass me. And then you have uh, what you want to do on the system, you know. So uh, this this is essentially commands. So there's not a complicated JCL here. You just uh, execute commands. <coughs> the different commands that are available actually uh, in uh, the interactive access facility you know there are commands to manipulate files and commands to do file management to tape management to do uh, all kinds of stuff so basically you type the same command just in a in a script if you wish uh, one after another <coughs> using the resources the that are available to a normal user and, and it's gonna work so in this case I'm gonna call the compiler that's FTN and I'll go to load and execute okay and then you have this thing I'm gonna explain and after that the program so where did I took this basically I took it from the Fortran <coughs> manual or Fortran instant book because we have these uh, sample deck structures here so if you want to submit a job to uh, the, the system that was the sample uh, structure the structure of a sample deck so to compile and execute as you can see you have this card at the beginning that's the user card or something like that this is the syntax for an older operating system i believe or maybe not maybe that's the name of the job and some accounting information anyway and then i introduce the user here i haven't test if it's going to work without it but uh, let's use it anyway and then as you can see FTN go this is the uh, calling the compiler and then load and go and then you have this card here 789 that's the end of record card that you obtain by punching 7 8 and 9 in column 1 of course we can't do that uh, in a ASCII file on the host so the way to do it is to type this tilde EOR end of record uh, I didn't know how to do it and it was not documented in the manual of Cybis so I had to look at the source of the the emulator to learn about these cards you know and how they are uh, coded uh, in a file and then at the end there is the 6789 card I believe that's end of information or end of input or something like that or job end uh, so it's possible that you write the uh, tilde EOI or maybe not because the system will recognize that the, the deck is finished anyway so uh, that's what we have to do okay so let me get so normally what we're gonna do is we're gonna load these uh, cards or this file into the card reader this will trigger the job and then we're gonna remove the paper to 
get the output of the job and convert it into a PDF to see what happened. Okay, so load cards, you the syntax is the same, you know. If we do FLC, you have to give the channel, the equipment, and then the file name. The channel, you can see here the card reader is initialized on channel 11, equipment 7. So we have to do load card 11, 7, then the name of the job. Let's say jobs DN. Hello. I have this message. If here you can see that, uh, maybe I increase this. You can see that uh, the compiler executed and the job uh, also run. Okay. And the name of the, the job sequence name for the for this particular run is triple A J. Okay. So back to this one. So now I'm going to remove the paper. Now I come here and I'm going to create a PDF for it. Triple A and it was J, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Now this is the output. So you can see you see the UJN, the user job name, that was LO. It was executed under the username T Hunter uh, in the service class batch. And then I have the listing of the compiler, and then the output of the compiler, and then at the end I will have the part of the day file that correspond to the job execution. So this this thing we see here, okay. Hello, user, hunter, blow on, and so on. You know, everything that's over here is going to be reproduced here, essentially. So you're going to know, you're going to get the part of the day file corresponding to the job execution, the execution of your job, you know, at the end of this uh, output over there. So that, that's how it goes. And I have to assume that if you use uh, magnet tapes and stuff like that, you just have to load the tapes and... Uh, unload the tapes and stuff like that. So I haven't tried it, so those interested could do it. The truth is I don't know exactly how the tapes are organized on this system, so <coughs> maybe I'm going to explore this later and you may do it uh, yourself. One last thing regarding this. Uh, it would be nice uh, if we had some kind of a socket uh, reader and a socket printer, you know. Uh, maybe I close this. <coughs> so that we don't have to manually uh, load the cards and manually uh, remove the paper and manually convert the whole thing. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be uh, available as is, you know. But, uh, of course, we have the source of this uh, emulator. So those of you who know how to do socket programming, maybe you can look at the source and check if you can organize things so that we can uh, set a, a socket on this uh, card reader and a socket on the printer and then uh, use some program, external programs, to submit jobs and uh, examine the thing. So uh, that's one possibility, but uh, <coughs> I'm leaving this to more uh, expert people than me, okay? So that's it for this video. See you in the next one where I'm going to talk about the interactive uh, access facility.